It's the dead of winter. The food supplies have dwindled. There's only two colonists left. Who do you eat? But oh no. Just as you begin munching on your friend, a herd of deer come frolicking on the map, providing food for months. It was all for nothing. <laughs> Welcome to RimWorld, and welcome to Deep Thoughts While Gaming. I'm Chris Chappell. Yes, today I'm at my most masochistic. So I'm playing RimWorld, a game about mankind's deepest, darkest drive. No, not that we're one missing meal away from cannibalism. RimWorld is about our relationship with technology. There's no way to be human and not use technology. Well, I guess you could walk around naked eating berries off bushes, but you wouldn't live very long. And neither would you live long playing like that in RimWorld. RimWorld is the brainchild of Ludion Studios, a dark and gritty sci-fi resource management game with crude, primitive graphics. Why would a major game studio fund something like this? They didn't. RimWorld exists because of a Kickstarter campaign in 2012 before full release in 2018. There was no big marketing campaign. The game spread because of word of mouth, the horrified whispers of grotesque stories unfolding in the far reaches of space. It seemed so fun we just had to play. Set in the far distant future, humanity has spread to the stars, but there's no faster than light travel. Worlds are isolated from each other, and you and your surviving colonists, or pawns as the game calls them, crash land on a planet on the fringes of known space, a rim world, not to be confused with Terry Pratchett's Discworld. You can land in one of several different biomes, each with their own perks and disadvantages. Landing in a tropical rainforest will give you access to plentiful resources, but you might have to deal with a plague or two. A desert biome might be short on supplies, but the harsh terrain is a natural defense against raids. Oh yes, you are not alone on this world. Or you could land on sea ice. It has no perks. It's all suck. Your characters and the world is procedurally generated so the game is never the same. Oh my, my colonist is a bloodlusting cannibal? I don't think he'll have a shortage of food. But what really makes RimWorld stand out is the stories that emerge from the gameplay, crafted by one of three AI storytellers that create random events that will have you telling your friends about your wild adventures in RimWorld. There's Phoebe Chillax, who will give you plenty of time to rest and recover between raids and events, making you think you chose the easy mode, until she annihilates your pathetic rice farmers with an onslaught of killbots. Cassandra Classic will more steadily ramp up the pressure and difficulty. Relying on solar power for your automatic gun turrets? Well. She'll send a massive raid to your doorstep just as a solar eclipse sends you back to the Stone Age. And then there's Randy Random. Oh God, Randy. Anything can happen at any time. Oh, a swarm of rabid raccoons just as monster insects burrow up from below my farm. What a lovely day in RimWorld. The goal is to survive, build a rocket, get off the planet. There are hundreds of factors that affect your pawns and their mental state. Basic things like hunger and warmth, but also their relationship with other colonists. There's always the risks that if things get too rough, one of your colonists might have a psychotic break and go on a rampage biting everyone, which could cause infection. So you need to put him down for the good of the colony. Fortunately, you can prevent that by making sure everyone has a steady supply of opioids until your colonists become addicted. Then when Randy sends a swarm of gerbils that devour your smoke leaf crop, they go into withdrawal and have the very psychic break you were trying to avoid. Ah, RimWorld. As the game goes on, the other inhabitants of the planet, from humans to alien wildlife to rampaging mechanoid life forms, will attack. But like New York subways, not everyone is out to kill you. Traders will come by and you can send out caravans to other colonists. You will do horrible things to survive. 
And that's half the fun. One of your colonists may form a fulfilling emotional bond with a dog, but then that dog dies defending you from a raid. But food supplies are scarce and, well, you can't let all that protein go to waste. But then you have to deal with the mental and emotional consequences of devouring your beloved four-legged friend. And of course, as the China Uncensored guy, I would be remiss if I neglected to mention that. While you can take those raiders prisoner, you can also harvest their organs for profit, just like the Chinese government does to dissidents. Technology is morally neutral. You can use nuclear energy to cleanly power cities, provide life-saving medical treatment, or blow up entire cities. And how you use RimWorld's expansive tech tree is up to you. No judgments here. The game doesn't judge, but I will. A skilled worker can look at a rock and tell you how it could be used with other rocks to make a wall or a spear. This is what the ancient Greeks called techne, which is where the word technology derives from. You weren't creating something new, you were reordering the relationship between things that already exist to achieve a desired outcome. That applies as much to the spear as it does to spiritual technology, like sacrifices, fortune telling, magic, and curses. For Alexander the Great, there was no difference between the phalanx and well-timed sacrifices to Zeus. Both were part of the technology of warfare, and equally important. You could compel the gods or spirits to put an evil eye on your enemies. This can also be done with ideas as well. The Greeks believed your mind was a sense organ, just like your eyes. It receives thoughts, the way your eyes receive images. The original Latin origin of our English word invent, invenire, literally means to come in. Ideas come into your mind, and you can craft them together. Of course, ideas themselves don't have agency, any more than a rock and stick can spontaneously come together and lodge themselves in the skull of an attacking raider. They're crafted together by people for a purpose, just like I take ideas and craft them to create this episode for the purpose of saving your soul. While the atheist may say religion is the cause of all war and evil in history, religion as an idea has no agency of its own, unless they're really blaming God, but then that kind of goes against the whole point, doesn't it? No, it's people who use ideas, including religion, to achieve something they desire. Guns don't kill people, unless they're part of a sentient mech army. Oh God, Randy, why? A perfectly non-controversial example is American slavery. Sugarcane was an incredibly lucrative crop, but farming it was so brutal that the average life expectancy of someone harvesting it was not very long. You couldn't pay someone enough to do it. So there was a need for slaves. And the plantation owners then crafted together different religious or scientific ideas to create the justification for what they were already doing. What's your excuse for all the slave labor you use in RimWorld? Why, there's even a whole DLC devoted to slavery. And this technological competition is what drives society. You might say it's for the betterment of pawns everywhere, but in reality, techne tends to be used for other purposes. Techne doesn't just have the potential for violence or slavery. It also holds the capacity for the complete destruction of free will. At its core, the point of reordering the relationship between things is to achieve a desired result, to instrumentalize the objects, subordinating them to your will. If even the very gods can be manipulated, then the same should be true for humans. After the Age of Enlightenment, the spiritual world was cast aside in favor of a scientific secular worldview. The Germans began using the term Wissenschaft, while that often gets translated into English as science, in reality, the implications are much broader. One could call it science as religion. All things could be scientifically understood. Gone were the days of grim superstition, and thus arose German political sciences, social sciences. 
the idea that there was a discoverable pattern to human activity, and with the right inputs, you could achieve a predictable and desired result. Human beings could be slaved to your will just like a pawn in RimWorld. This is certainly what later German eugenicists thought, but this is also the driving force behind the spread of German Marxism. Crime isn't a matter of personal choice, it's a result of poverty, a lack of material goods and capital. Redistribute wealth and there will be no crime. Isn't that right, Chairman Mao? Historical inequalities keeping your society down? Force diversity with DEI. Sure, doors might fall off your Boeing airplane mid-flight, but that's a small price to pay. Wait, is someone playing RimWorld with us? The universe becomes entirely mechanized, atoms bumping into each other. Everything fatalistically predetermined, like NPCs in a video game, devoid of agency, the tools of those using them. And the ultimate masters are themselves just pawns, operating based on social and historical inputs. Oh yes, you thought you were in control of your RimWorld colonists? No, no, no. You're just escaping the social pressures of late-stage capitalism bearing down upon you, slaved to the zeitgeist. Your choices don't matter because you don't have a choice. You're just as much the pawn. Instead of a loving creator god who's given humanity free will, the ability to choose between right and wrong, good and evil, your actions, even your very thoughts, are determined by everything that came before you. There is no good and evil, just scientifically predictable class or racial struggle. And anything the oppressed do in the name of liberation is good. And everything the oppressors do, like asking not to be murdered for their stuff, is evil. Like combining a stone and a stick to make a spear, Marxism was made out of pre-existing ideas. The Christian identification with the poor and oppressed, absolute scientific materialism, and a healthy dose of Gnosticism. With the oppressed using spears or legislation to get what they want. But here too, RimWorld gives us a way out of fatalistic technological predeterminism. After all, the best stories are told when you give up control to a higher power, namely Randy Random. Oh, Randy, you sent a drop pod stuffed full of human meat? Now what am I supposed to do with that, you devil you? Thank you for watching Deep Thoughts While Gaming. And remember, when life gives you lemons, change your AI storyteller. And to all you precious pawns watching, allow me to instrumentalize you to join the channel. You'll be supporting more episodes of Deep Thoughts While Gaming and get access to an exclusive Discord server, live streams, videos, emojis, and my promise to you to send an onslaught of raids that will break down your pathetic defenses. <laughs> if you want to know how to really handle an onslaught of bug invaders, check out this Deep Thoughts While Gaming about Helldivers 2 for Super Earth!